When I first got into game development, I was really interested in physics-based games. I looked up to game developers like Danny and Edmund McMillan, who had at some point in their career created ragdoll-based games or soft-body-based games, which relied on physics and procedural animations for their player controllers. Up until this point in my career, my skill level was inadequate to actually be able to replicate this style of game development, but today, with years of experience under my belt, I'll be showing you all the successful creation of a somewhat working active ragdoll controller inside of Bevy and Rust. On top of that, I'm going to be writing the physics engine completely from scratch, as I believe I've gained enough experience to be able to do so, and I think it would be a lot more entertaining for you guys to watch. Obviously, we first need to create a scene to place our ragdoll in for testing. I accomplished this using the tile map editor tiled and a Rust library called Bevy ECS tile map to load in a simple demo area. On top of that, I reused some tiles from one of my old Bevy projects because art is not really the focus of this video. Rather, this video will focus more on how our ragdoll system actually works. Usually, I would access the tile map for collisions using a grid represented by a 1D array. This works quite well for 2D platformer or RPG collisions, however, this time I will choose to represent the tile map using a list of edges instead that make up a 2D polygon because it is more extendable to other collision shapes besides a tile map and because I've recently learned a few tricks from creating soft body engines. Of course, to represent the tile map collider with edges, we need to implement a sort of greedy meshing algorithm but in 2D and with edges instead of a voxel mesh. So, because I couldn't be bothered to find the elegant solution to this problem, I wrote a rather complicated solution based on instinct. But this solution is what I think is conceptually the most straightforward solution. Let me explain. We start by scanning horizontally until we stumble upon a solid tile. If there is air above the tile, we mark it and keep scanning until we find a tile which does not have air above it, or we find that we have hit an air tile. This process repeats for different Y levels and another time by checking whether there is air below the tile instead of above the tile. We can repeat this same method by scanning vertically, and after these four loops are complete, we will have generated an optimized tile map collider with the least amount of edges. Alright, enough of this boring boilerplate code, let's move on to the ragdoll physics. First, we need a way to define our ragdoll character. Since we are already using the tiled editor to create our level, why don't we also define our ragdoll character inside of it as well? Let's start off basic for now. Define a few point masses using an object layer in tiled, and connect them to each other by adding an object property that contains the unique ID of the parent of each point mass. For now, we'll just make the arms a single joint, the legs a single joint, and the head a single joint. We can add more joints for realism later on in the video. Then inside of Bevy, let's render our ragdoll using the gizmo system, just to debug whether we've successfully spawned in our character. And as you can see, our tiled to game system is working correctly, and we can see our ragdoll being represented by some lines and some circles. But if we enable gravity, you'll see that our ragdoll will just fall through the floor. Obviously this is not what we want, so we need a way to detect whether our point masses are inside of an object so that we can move them out accordingly. Luckily, I've gained quite some experience with this exact problem from my work with soft body simulations. To see if a point is inside of a shape, we can extend an infinite horizontal ray to the right or in any direction if you want. The amount of times this ray intersects the edges of the shape determines whether our point is inside of the shape or not. If the ray intersects an odd amount of times, this means that the point is inside of the shape. Otherwise, the point is outside of the shape if it intersects an even amount of times. It's very simple. After applying this logic to our point masses, we can see that they successfully avoid falling through the floor. And surprisingly, this is all we really need for our collision logic. Okay, so how are we going to get our ragdoll to stop collapsing in on itself? Well, the easiest way I can think of solving this problem is by connecting springs between each point. This is how soft body simulations work and after doing some research, connecting springs between point masses for a ragdoll simulation is what is known as a spring joint system, which we can also use for a ragdoll simulation. The code for this is quite simple. We initialize a resting length, which is just the initial length between the child mass and the parent mass which it is connected to. Then we calculate a spring force based on how far from the resting length the current length between the child mass and the parent mass is. Then, to prevent infinite simple harmonic motion, we apply a damping force based on the relative velocity between our two point masses. 
This code should enable our ragdoll to not collapse together instantly, but this will definitely not fix the whole problem. You can see that our ragdoll will still collapse in on itself, just not as dramatically. The point masses are technically all at resting length from each other, but not in the orientation in which we want them to be in. We've successfully created a ragdoll system, just not an active ragdoll system. To enable our ragdoll to balance, I initially thought of creating a sort of constraint system where spring joints would get pulled back to their maximum allowed restriction angle by another spring force. But eventually, I realized I couldn't find a way to make this system truly stable. And since I'm not trying to create a rage game here, I scrapped the idea after investing way too much time into it. Instead, I decided to take inspiration from my work on soft body simulations once more and just create a shape matching algorithm where point masses are being pulled back to their original positions by an invisible spring force. If we tweak the power of these invisible spring forces through code, we can do some pretty cool things such as procedural walk animations which wouldn't be possible with too strong of an invisible spring force. Let's go over the code for this constraining system. First, we find a vector for our child mass in the frame of the parent mass. Next, we use an initial offset vector which is, as per the name, the initial offset of our child mass from the parent mass when it is first spawned in. Then, we just apply a spring force between the two positions, as well as a damping force again to make sure there are no infinite oscillations in our shape matching system. Also, I was a bit lazy so I just added a NAND check at the end of this code instead of accounting for the edge cases in a better way. But after implementing this system, we should have a standing dummy. Now, this dummy is probably not the ideal ragdoll because it seems pretty static with our shape matching system. But I've always thought it would be pretty cool to create a ragdoll controller which is also mechanically easy to control. So that along with the shape matching being a much simpler solution than a restriction on angle system helped guide me towards it as a solution. Before we start implementing player controls, I'd like to first move our physics updates into a fixed update instead of frame update so that it acts the same way on every machine regardless of how much FPS the game is running at. With that out of the way, let me explain how player controls will work. First off, inside of tiled, I've labeled every bone with a string property. This is so we can easily access the bones in code once they are loaded in. Additionally, there will be this one bone called the root bone inside of tiled that contains a bunch of properties which helps us customize the player's movement. Let's take a look at the code for our player movement. First off, we've got a resource which contains each player bone as an entity and a reference to the joint entity in a hash map. This is, as mentioned before, an easy way for us to get access to each bone in our player ragdoll. Next, our actual movement code consists of a force being applied to the root bone in the direction that we want the ragdoll to move. To achieve a procedural walking animation, we also apply a walking force in opposite directions on the right and left leg bones so that the legs appear to be animated and our ragdoll looks like it is walking. Additionally, we also want our player to stand still when they are not moving, so we set the friction to be zero when they are running but not when they are standing still. The friction system in this project is actually pretty realistic. We use the formula for friction given by the normal force multiplied by the coefficient of friction to solve for the force of friction. And the realistic part about this is that we actually have access to information about the normal force thanks to our custom physics system. For those who are curious, I just calculated the change in velocity when a collision is detected and set that as the instantaneous normal force. Let's spice up the scene a bit and replace our gizmo rendering system with some actual sprites. How do I do that? Well, it's just some simple math. We first calculate the rotation our sprite needs to be in order to face in the direction of the joint. Next, we place the sprite at the midpoint of the joint and stretch it out so that it fits the whole joint. Next, go into tiled and tell our code what sprite should be on each joint and we should be good to go. That's basically it. To further spice up the scene, I added more joints to our ragdoll for realisticity and made this cool grappling gun ability just to test out whether I could extend the ragdoll controller. That's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed or found this video interesting, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so I can continue posting more content like this.